Abbott, what time is it? It's time for the Abbott and Costello Show. We're on the air for ABC here in Hollywood. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's go with the Abbott and Costello Show. Yes, it's the Abbott and Costello Show, produced and transcribed in Hollywood for your listening and laughing pleasure. Chuckles with a carload and music by Matty Malnick. So hold on to your chairs, folks, for here they are, Bud Abbott and Lou Costello. What's all this yelling for? And stop it and tell me, where have you been all day? Well, I'll tell you as soon as I look. <laughs> Abbott, my grandfather died this morning. Oh, that's too bad. What has to become of your grandmother? Oh, Grandpa took care of it. He did something for Grandma in a cookie jar in the kitchen. What was it, money? No, cookies. <laughs> <laughs> when are you, you going out and get yourself a job? Well, I'm trying, Abbott. See, I work 20 girl hours a day. You, you mean man hours? You work your hours, I work mine. <laughs> Just a dope. Did you ever go to school? Yes, sir. I went to school. I'll never forget until I was 13 years old. I had long golden golden curls, and one night my mother cut them off. Oh, I'll bet the teacher was surprised the next day. Not as much as the kid that sat next to me. He'd been carrying my books home for two years. <laughs> Get him out of here. for some real laughs with our zany stars tonight. But before they continue, listen to this. Wait a minute. You look tired. You're not kidding. You do look tired, though, Lou. Well, I'll tell you. What? I stayed home last night, Abbott. I sat in the living room in the dark all night reading Darwin's theory on relativity of monkeys to man. You sat in the dark reading? How Mm -hmm. can you read in the dark? I figured that if you don't understand what you're reading, what's the use of straining your eyes? You know nothing of... <laughs> You know nothing about books Your whole family is illiterate Is that so? Yeah, that's so Well, my Uncle Tom is a great writer The poor guy, his wife ran away with a sailor All the animals on his farm died Cyclone blew down his barn His car rolled off a cliff He had a bad case of laryngitis His house burned down And in trying to put out the fire He climbed up the fireman's ladder And fell off and broke every bone in his body So he wrote the story of his life And now it's on the radio What's it called? A Date with Judy. <laughs> well, never, never mind that. Where have you been? <laughs> never mind that. Where have you been all afternoon? Right around option time, they keep laughing them up. <laughs> uh, well, where have you been all afternoon? Well, I went to the movies, Abbott, and I sat through the picture 15 times. Why did you sit through the picture 15 times? I couldn't remember where I came in. <laughs> I suppose you took Viola Vaughn to the movies with you? No, sir, I got a new girl. Oh, she's got a beautiful house. 
She's got a great big bathroom with a Grecian bathtub. She has? Yeah, I don't know what she needs it for. I've been over there every night for two weeks. Not one Greek come over there for a bath. <laughs> you and your girls, you dummy. You don't know the first thing about girls. I'll have you know that I've been going with girls all my life. Why, when I was 16 years old, I smoked my first cigarette and kissed my first girl. Uh, who did you kiss? Who knows? The smoke got in my eyes. <laughs> I, I don't know why I even talk to you. You have no culture. You have nothing about... You know nothing about literature. You know nothing about art. You know nothing about music. Hold it right there. What? Abbott, when you're speaking about music, you're looking at the former child prodigy. You were? When I was only four years old, my mother bought me a piano. Before I was five years old, I made $400. Giving recitals? No, I sold the piano. I... <laughs> You're an idiot and your whole family are idiots. Oh, I don't know. My brother Pat is really smart. He just invented a new breakfast food. It's called Gorgeous George Flakes. <laughs> a breakfast food called Gorgeous George Flakes? Yes, I got some right here in my pocket. Here, taste them. Let's see. That's mm -hmm. mm -hmm. not bad, huh? <laughs> uh, wait a minute. That stuff is terrible. It tastes like chopped up whisk brooms. It is. Of course, it's got no food value, but it sweeps out your stomach. I... <laughs> Hello, Uncle Louie Hey, it's Abbott's nephew What do you want, nephew Norman? Well, Uncle Bud, I've just been reading a book And it says that the girls that graduate from Vassar College Have 3.1 children And the girls that graduate from UCLA have 1.2 children And this proves conclusively that women have more children than men <laughs> And why not? They're home a lot Oh, Uncle Louie, you're pretty smart. I know a guy who'd give $10 just for your head. Scientist? No, he runs a bowling alley. <laughs> you know, Abbott, I wish sometimes this was a giveaway program. Why? I'd like to give away your nephew, Norman. <laughs> you, you lay off my nephew. Abbott, I just found out why they call him Norman Mixmaster Abbott. How did he get the uh, middle name of Mixmaster? When he was born, his father took one look at him, threw all his money in a bowl, and beat it. <laughs> Costello, how can you be so pleasant one moment and so mean the next? You're a regular Dr. Jenkel and uh, Mr. Hyde. Uh, who were they? A team like Amos and Andy and Abbott and Costello? No, 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 no. Dr. Jenkel and uh, Mr. Hyde were one man. Or uh, rather, they were really two men. Mm. Only actually, they were only one man. Uh, don't you know the story? No, and it don't sound like you do either. <laughs> well, it's a very famous story. Are you familiar with uh, Robert Louis Stevenson? Well, he hardly ever speaks to me. You... <laughs> you idiot. Stevenson has been dead for over 40 years. No wonder he hardly ever speaks to me. <laughs> I've read all of his stories. He wrote sea stories. Oh, I love the sea. You love the sea? Yes. Love of the sea runs in my family. My great-grandfather was a sea dog. My grandfather was a sea dog. My father was a sea dog. And then along came he. Well, luck can't hold out forever. A water spaniel had to creep in there someplace. <laughs> you idiot. You know nothing about the sea. The ocean is wonderful. Have you ever seen the flying fishes fly and the leaping tuna leap? No, but I saw the dolphins dove. And I've heard the purposes... Perp. <laughs> Why don't you come fishing with me uh, next Sunday? Costello, I'm going out on my sloop. Uh, uh, do you know anything about sloops? I love sloops. <laughs> There's nothing like a hot bowl of sloop with crackers. <laughs> yes, dummy, you wouldn't know the difference between a sloop and a gunboat. That's what I had for lunch. Chicken, gunboat, sloop. <laughs> Come in Hiya, fellas What do you want? Nothing I saw a sign out there that said Ring the bell for Abbott and Costello Well? What's the matter? Can't you guys ring it yourselves? <laughs> if I was to tell you that these guys that do one line get more than us You wouldn't believe it Costello, did you hire that actor that uh, was just in here? Certainly. 
That was Milton Bronson from New York. Milton Bronson. Never heard of him. Well, he just completed a very successful run in New York of 32 weeks on the Astor Roof where he was nailing down tar paper. <laughs> and speaking of tar paper, Abbott, here comes our beautiful secretary, Viola Vaughn. Say, I heard that remark, Costello, and I came here to tell you that I'm leaving you for another man. Who is it, Van Johnson? No. Gregory Peck? No. Robert Taylor? No. Am I warm? If you were warm, I wouldn't be leaving you. (laughs) 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 That's telling him, Viola. (laughs) Viola, sweetheart, you can't leave me. I love you. Come into my arms and give me a kiss. I can't. You've got a cigar in your mouth. What are you worrying about? It's not lit. (laughs) You have no romance in your soul. Yes, Abbott is right, Costello. Have you ever really made love to a girl? Last week, I met a girl under a tree in Griffith Park. (laughs) We sat under that tree and made love. Every time I kissed her, she'd carve my initials in a tree. Every time I kissed her, she'd carve her initials in a tree. Every time she'd kiss me, I'd carve her initials in a tree. And every time she'd kiss me, I'd carve my initials in a tree. Then what happened? About 9.30, the tree fell over and hit us on the head. (laughs) You must be pretty sharp at kissing. Well, Viola, my kisses come in four delicious flavors. What are they? Baked, fried, barbecued, and hitch up the fire engine, boys. There's going to be a hot time in the old town tonight. (laughs) Viola, why don't you marry Costello? Why, well, that's the most obnoxious proposition I've had this I year. I knew you'd like it, Viola. <laughs> Viola, if you marry me, we'll have a boy for me and a girl for you, and a boy for me and a girl for you, and a boy for me and a girl for you. Uh, wait, 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 wait a minute. What about me? We're not taking any more orders right now. <laughs> Viola, I'm going to kiss you. Costello, if you kiss me, I'll tell all my other boyfriends. Tell your girlfriends. It'll do me more good. (laughs) Viola, you know how Costello and I feel about you, and it's up to you to choose between us. I did. This afternoon, I was in the woods, and I picked a daisy, and as I pulled off the petals, I said, I love Abbott. I love Costello. I love Abbott. I love Costello. And uh, which one of us won? Maddie Malnick. (laughs) Maddie Malnick? Uh Uh-huh. How did he get in this? He was in the woods with me when I picked the daisy. (laughs) (laughs) Now, I'm only kidding, Lou. You're really the one I love. Naturally. Oh, come here. Let me put my arms around you. There. Just rest your head on my shoulders. Mm. Lou, would you mind if I ran my fingers through your hair? I wouldn't care if you ran through it in your bare feet. (laughs) Viola, when you hold me like this, I get a naked feeling in my chest. Is it love? No, you're bending my junior G-man's bed. Get him out of here! And there's a lot more mad stuff still to go. Right now, a change of pace will let you hear this. Gentlemen, with Hal Winters, the singing star of our show. Bro, 
wash those tears from your eyes and try to realize that the ache in my heart is for you. Brush those tears from your eyes and try to realize that from now on I'll always be true. I went away, but I didn't mean to stay, and I will regret it until my dying day. Brush those tears from your eyes and try to realize that the ache in my heart is for you. Brush those tears from your eyes and try to realize that the ache in my heart is for you. Brush those tears from your eyes and try to realize that the ache in my heart is for you. That from now on I'll always be true. I went away, but I didn't mean to stay, and I will regret it until my dying day. Brush those tears from your eyes and try to realize that the ache in my heart is for you. But I didn't mean to stay, and I will regret it until my dying day. Brush those tears from your eyes and try to realize that the ache in my heart is for you. I just been thinking. <laughs> we got an offer. We ought to do something about it. Uh, what are you talking about? Well, you remember the deal CBS made with Jack Benny? They gave him six million dollars to come over to their network. Yes. Well, CBS wants to give us nine million dollars. What for? To stay on ABC. <laughs> <laughs> you idiot! Comparing yourself to Jack Benny. Jack is a great comedian. I'm a great comedian. Oh, Jack Benny is always good for a laugh. I'm always good for a laugh. Jack Benny gets $20,000 a week. I'm always good for a laugh. <laughs> Jack Benny made uh, Waukegan uh, famous. That's in Illinois, you know. Hey, you wouldn't have known it had you been there in the script. <laughs> so what? I made Patterson, New Jersey famous. I made the whole state of New Jersey famous. Now, wait a minute, now, wait a minute. What did you do for New Jersey? I was born in New Jersey. So what? I went to school number 15 in New Jersey. I made friends with everybody in New Jersey. I'm always rooting for New Jersey. When I was 16 years old, I formed a band, and we played all over New Jersey. What was the name of your band? Lou Costello and his Royal Canadians. <laughs> you please talk, Sands? Hey, wait a minute. Come here. What, uh, what is that book you're carrying? Well, it's my new Sam Shovel Detective book. I just finished writing it. I call it 100 Steps to Take When You Come Face to Face with a Killer. Sounds interesting. What are the steps? What are the steps? I'll read them to you. Step one, move in front of the killer. Step two, place your hand on the doorknob. Step three, open the door. Wait, uh, that's three. Right. What about the other uh, 97 steps? As soon as you get to the door open, take them as fast as you can. <laughs> Just on doing Sam Shovel tonight, I hope you have an interesting case. Oh, that I have. You have? But it's a very sad case, Abbott. I call it the case of the housefly who drowned when he walked in a pot of hot coffee or strolling through the perk one day. <laughs> well, okay. Let's get on with it. I'm Sam Shovel, Private... I... Hello, Sam. Ay, 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 ay. That's the beautiful nurse who works for the doctor across the hall. He's an eye specialist. 
She makes a spectacle of herself. <laughs> There's a lot of doctors in this bill, and next door to me is a cat doctor. I wouldn't go to him. Very few cats make good doctors. <laughs> I'm tired. I haven't been sleeping good lately. My bedroom is right next to the nursery. All night long, I keep hearing wails in the nursery. Just wails from the nursery. Sometimes I wish I had kids. <laughs> Bell phone rings, receiver up. Oh. <laughs> Hello, Sam Shovel. I was giving you the whole works. <laughs> Hello, Sam Shovel, private detective speaking. Hello, Sam. This is the chief of police of San Francisco. I need your help. Some darn crook stole the Golden Gate Bridge. When did you first notice it was missing? This morning when I heard several loud splashes. <laughs> That's the way it goes in this business. You get all kinds of cases. I'm working on a case of man, about a man, a crook, who steals soda pop. Nothing but soft drinks. The police haven't tabbed this public enemy number seven up. <laughs> This office gets busier every day I gotta get some new furniture Ah, there's an ad in the paper It says knee hole desk half price No wonder they're selling them at half price Very few people have holes in their knees Big enough to put a desk in <laughs> Here's another headline Los Angeles buses to run on schedule It would be better if we could get them to run on the street I noticed my pal, Lieutenant Abbott of the Homicide Squad, coming towards the office. Lieutenant Abbott is a self-made man. His family was very poor. Not only did he come into this world without a cent to his name, but when he was born, he owed $17. <laughs> Abbott was an incubator baby, but his family was so poor they couldn't afford an incubator. For the first six months of his life, he sat in a can of sterno. Hello, Sam Shovel. Ah, it's my pal, Lieutenant Abbott. You look tired, Lieutenant. Yeah, yeah. I've been out all morning showing a bunch of rookie cops the ropes. Showing them the ropes? I'll bet that's a tough job. No, it ain't so tough. I just march them into a hardware store and say, Men, those are the ropes. <laughs> Come to think of it, Abbott, you ain't tired. It's your jokes. By the way, Sam, how do you feel? Like a banjo. Like a banjo? How's that? Everybody's picking on me. <laughs> well, there's two tired jokes. Anybody want to buy them? Talk sense, Sam. I'm going to let you in on a very important case from Scotland Yard. Lady Stirring Spoon, the famous English jewel smugglers in town, turn over a load of diamonds to Limehouse Harry, the fence. We've got Limehouse Harry in jail. Lady Stirring Spoon is... Has never met Limehouse, and I want you to take his place. If you do this, you'll get a lot of cases from Scotland Yard. How can I be sure of getting more cases from Scotland Yard? Well, they will always be in England. Yes, and I hope we can afford it. <laughs> Enough of this nonsense, Sam. <laughs> We're going over to Lady Stirring Spoon's hideout. Yeah. Remember, you're supposed to be Limehouse Harry, the English fence. Lieutenant Abbott and I hurried to Lady Stirring Spoon's hideout I, impersonating Limehouse Harry, knocked on the door The door was opened by one of the most beautiful women I've ever seen She was wearing a Berlin airlift dress In order to see her, you had to fly over it <laughs> Lady Stirring Spoon I'm Limehouse Harry And I'm a fence a fence? A fence. <laughs> you look more like the wall around the La Brea tar pits. <laughs> Limehouse Harry, eh? Mm. Why'd you ever leave London? Well, old girl, I couldn't very well take it with me. Down the business, Sam. He's got to get the diamonds. Oh, yes. Uh, lady, Lady Stellingspoon, uh, before you give the diamonds, would you give me a kiss? 
Well... <laughs> well, you are nice, Harry. Yes. But uh, kissing during business hours is hardly cricket. Oh, come, 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 come. All right, Harry. Come here. <laughs> And I still say that's not cricket. Lady, if cricket was like that, it would run baseball right out of town. <laughs> Harry, you know, you intrigue me. You're such a wit. How would you like to be my fifth husband? Fifth? Uh, what happened to the other four? Oh, they all died of natural causes. Pneumonia. How do you know it was pneumonia? They mm. always coughed so when I took them out of the deep freeze. <laughs> That's enough, That's of, this enough of this nonsense. That's me. Oh, oh, quiet, I'll talk. <laughs> now, enough is enough. You never had this girl kiss you, did you? Quiet. <laughs> Just a minute. Guarantee Lady Stirring Spoon. Plenty times. We're, we're cops. Why, Sam, shovel the detective, and I'm Lieutenant Abbott, and we're taking you to jail. Oh, oh no, oh, go no. Ahead. <laughs> oh, no, no, please, not that. Please, Mr. Sam Shovel, don't take me to jail. Lieutenant, she's too beautiful to put in jail. Let's give her a chance. Sam, you're crazy. She's a crook. What do you propose to do? Lady Siri Spoon, I know you're a crook, but I'm going to give you a chance. Oh, <laughs> Sam, if you do, I'll never steal anything again. Okay. I'm going to turn out the lights and count three. Then I'll turn them on again. If all the diamonds you stole are on that table when the lights go on, I'll let you go free. Out with the lights. One, two, three. Turn on the lights. <laughs> Sam! <laughs> Sam! The diamonds are not on the table and, and Lady Stirring Spoon is gone. Where did she go? Never mind her, Lieutenant. What happened to my pants? Get them out of here! <laughs> The boys will be back for a curtain call in just a few seconds. The time it takes to tell you this. Costello, I worked hard tonight, and I could stand a drink. You know I don't drink, Abbott, but if you come over to my house, I'll mix you one of my Uncle Mike's favorites. Why, what does it consist of? Well, first you take a quart of bourbon, mix it with three quarts of gin and a pint of vodka. <laughs> then you add four bottles of brandy, shake it all up together, and drink it. It's called a California pedestrian cocktail. <laughs> Why do you call it a California pedestrian cocktail? One drink, and you'll never know what hit you. I'll try it. Before we say goodnight, let's tell the folks who helps us put this show on every Thursday night. Let's. Okay, our writing staff is headed by Eddie Foreman, with Paul Collin, Pat Costello, Martin Ragway, and Leonard Stern. And our producer is Charles Vander. Good night, folks. Good night to everybody in Patterson. Good night. <laughs> Listen each Thursday night at this time for another great Abbott and Costello show, produced and transcribed in Hollywood. Be sure to stay tuned for the outstanding entertainment which follows throughout the evening on this ABC station.